beautiful electronic music presented in this radio broadcast is entitled Gone to Earth Through the Book of Minerals by Renee Vander Wooden. Today's program is about minerals, the fundamental geologic building blocks of the natural world. Geologists study minerals to understand the formation of rocks and to locate and extract resources that we use in our everyday life. Some minerals are the raw materials for manufacturing chemicals, concrete, and common objects like sheetrock. Other minerals, such as ore minerals, produce valuable metals like copper, silver, and gold. Some minerals are so beautiful in their natural form that they are a delight to our eyes and we use them as jewelry and ornamentation. Some minerals, like uranium and coal, provide for our energy needs. We consume minerals in our food, and they in turn fuel our body and build the skeletal materials that give our body form and shape. It really is no wonder that mineralogy fascinates both geologists and the rock hound in us all. So what is a mineral? Geologists define a mineral as a naturally occurring solid, usually inorganic, with a definite, only slightly variable chemical composition and an ordered internal structure. For a mineral to be naturally occurring, they must be formed in nature, not created in factories. Synthetic minerals are manufactured materials. Minerals must be formed by natural processes. They may be formed by either inorganic or organic processes. There are several inorganic ways that minerals can form, such as 1. Solidification of minerals from a magma as it cools. 2. Precipitation from a dissolved state in a fluid water being the most common medium, and three, by chemical reactions that occur when solid rock undergoes metamorphism due to high pressure and high non-melting temperature. Organic minerals form when solid crystalline minerals are produced by organisms. For example, biogenic apatite, the mineral in the bones of living vertebrates, contain relatively high concentrations of carbonate, sodium, and phosphate and the mineral aragonite, a pseudomorph of calcite, is found in oysters, clams, and mussel shells. A mineral is a solid that has structural rigidity and resistance to change, changes of shape or volume. A solid object does not flow or take on the shape of its container, nor does it expand to fill the entire volume available to it like a gas does. A mineral has definable chemical composition. This simply means that a chemical formula of the elements for that specific mineral can be written. Some minerals, like diamond and graphite, have only one element, carbon, in their formula. Other minerals, like biotite mica, have a complex formula because they contain many elements fixed in varying proportions. The molecules of elements combine due to the interaction of electrons in the outer layer of the element or atom. Remember that an atom is composed of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom, surrounded by shells of electrons whirling around the nucleus at varying radiuses. Each shell has a set number of electrons that it can hold. The inner layer holds two, the next two layers hold eight, and subsequent layers hold eight or sixteen electrons. Each electron shell must be filled before electrons can fill the next layer. The outer layer or shell of an atom is often not filled and, it, and is unstable and may interact with other atoms to form bonds that hold the two atoms together. There are three types of chemical bonds, ionic, covalent, and metallic. The weakest bond is ionic, in which one atom steals an electron from the outer shell of another atom to fill its own outer shell. This creates a weak magnetic attraction between the atoms and holds them together. These bonds are easily broken. An example of an ionic bonded mineral or halite or table salt. Water tugging on the halite atoms can easily break the bonded ions apart. Covalent bonding occurs when two atoms share an electron between the two outer shells. Because they are sharing electrons, the two atoms are united in a very strong bond that is not easily broken. The carbon elements in diamond, the hardest mineral, of all are covalently bonded. Metallic bonding occurs when where electrons are free to roam around many different atoms, typically of the same element. For example, the mobility of electrons in copper to roam to where they are needed within a wire allows the wire to easily conduct electricity. 
Also, Van der Waals forces occur when uneven distribution of electrical charges around a neutral molecule exerts slight attractive and repulsive magnetic attraction to another molecule. For example, the oxygen atom of a water molecule is covalently bonded to a pair of smaller hydrogen atoms on one side of the oxygen atom. The hydrogen end of the molecule has a weak positive charge and the other end has a weak negative charge. When two molecules of water are in proximity, the, the two molecules unite together by magnetic attraction. This force, Van der Waals force, holds them together. The slightest disturbance may break the bond, allowing the water molecule to flow and reunite with another water molecule. The atoms that make a mineral are fixed in a specific orderly pattern. When atoms are fixed in an orderly pattern, it is called a crystalline solid. Every mineral has a unique crystallography. The imaginary framework representing the arrangement of the atoms is referred to as the crystal lattice. The geometry of the, of the arrangement defines the crystal lattice and the shape of the crystal. The ideal shape of a quartz crystal is a hexagonal prism terminating with six-sided pyramids at each end. When a magma cools rapidly and does not form an internal crystallography, it is called a glass. One example of a glass is obsidian. Obsidian is mineral-like, but not a true mineral because as a glass, it is, it is not crystalline. Some minerals share the same chemical composition but have very different crystallography. For example, diamonds and graphite are pseudomorphs because both are composed of single elements of carbon, but with very different structure. A diamond, the hardest mineral, has strong covalent bonding and belongs to the crystal class hexoctahedral. Graphite, one of the softest minerals, is also composed entirely of the element car carbon. It has weak van der Waals bonding and belongs to the crystal class dihexanol dipyramidal. There are 5,230 minerals that have been approved by the International Mineralogical Association. The good news is that every mineral has observed or easily measured physical properties. The principal properties are color, streak, luster, hardness, cleavage, and or fracture, specific gravity, and external crystal form. The color of a mineral is its most noticeable property. For some minerals, it is a useful indicator. For example, olivine is named for its typically olive green color. Other minerals, like quartz, exhibit a broad range of colors due to trace metallic impurities within the quartz crystal lattice. A pure quartz is clear or translucent. If quartz contains two one-hundredths of one percent of iron in the matrix, then you have purple amethyst. Two one-thousandths of one percent of titanium in the matrix of quartz turns the colorless pure quartz to rose color. Luster is simply how light reflects from a mineral's surface. There are two luster subdivisions, metallic and non-metallic. An example of a mineral that has a metallic sheen is pyrite. Minerals with non-metallic sheen are described as silky, vitreous, or glassy, satiny, resinous, pearly, earthy, adamantine, or brilliant. Orthoclase feldspar is a non-metallic mineral with a pearly luster. Streak is the color of the mineral residue after it has been scratched on an unglazed porcelain plate. Each mineral has a unique streak regardless of its variety. Streaks are generally black, dark gray, red, brown, or white. The mineral hematite will streak red and the mineral calcite will streak white. Hardness is a measure of resistance by scratching. Hard minerals will scratch softer ones. The mineral calcite is softer than quartz. When you scratch quartz against calcite, the quartz will leave a scratch mark on the softer calcite mineral. The German mineralologist, Frederick Mose, devised a quantitative scale of relative mineral hardness. The softest mineral, talc, has a hardness of 1, and diamond, the hardest mineral, has a hardness of 10. The scale was standardized to quartz, number 7, on the Mohs scale which is 100 times harder than talc. Generally, hard minerals 5.5 and above on the Mohs scale will scratch glass, but cannot be scratched by knife blade or masonry nail. Soft minerals will not scratch glass and can be scratched with a knife blade or masonry nail. 
cleavage in mineralogy describes the flat, smooth planes that form when minerals break along planes of weak bonding. When a mineral has cleavage, when that mineral is broken, it will always resemble the larger broken piece. Calcite has three directions of cleavage that form the rhomboid-shaped fragments. Mica minerals split into very thin, transparent sheets along a single plane of cleavage. A calcite crystal is hexagonal, six-sided, but when broken, forms a rhomboid. A rhomboid is a parallelogram in which adjacent sides are of unequal lengths and angles are non-right angle. Some minerals fracture. They do not break along flat planes of weaknesses like cleavage, but rather break along unpredictable, irregular surfaces. Quartz breaks into very irregular shaped pieces that resemble broken glass. Density is a measure of the mass of a material divided by its volume. It is measured in units such as grams per centimeter, kilograms per cubic meter, or pounds per cubic feet. Specific gravity is the density of the material divided by the density of an equivalent volume of water. For example, quartz has a density of 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter, and if you divide by the density of water, 1 gram per cubic centimeter, then the specific gravity of quartz is 2.65. The units cancel out. In mineralogy, crystal habit is the characteristic external shape of an individual crystal or crystal group when that mineral is allowed to grow uninterrupted. Some minerals have crystals that exhibit regular polygons that are helpful in their identification. Magnetite crystals sometimes occurs as octahedrons, garnets often as dodecahedrons, and halite crystals are cubes. Although most minerals exhibit only one common crystal shape, some, such as pyrite, have two or more crystal characteristic habits. Pyrite may be either cubic or dodecahedron. Minerals are divided into two major classes, silicates and non-silicates. It is important to note that only eight elements make up most of the rock-forming minerals and represent more than 98% by weight of the continental crust. These eight elements, in order of abundance from most to least, are oxygen, 46.6%, Silicons, 27.7%, aluminum, 8.1%, iron, 5.0%, calcium, 3.6%, sodium, 2.8%, potassium, 2.6%, and magnesium, 2.1%. Every silicate mineral contains the two most abundant elements in the crust, oxygen and silicon, and generally one or more of the co other common elements. The most common silicate mineral groups are olivine, pyroxene, amphiboles, micas, feldspar, and quartz. The silicates are further divided into two major groups based on their chemical makeup. One, the light silicates containing varying amounts of aluminum, potassium, calcium, and sodium in addition to the silicates. The most common light silicates are the feldspar, muscovite, micas, and quartz. And two, the dark or ferro magnesium silicates are minerals containing ions of iron and or magnesium in their structure. Because of their iron content, ferro magnesium silicates are, all, are dark in color and have a greater specific gravity between 3.2 and 3.6 than lighter non ferro magnesium silicates. The most common dark silicate minerals are olivine, pyroxenes, amphiboles, biotite mica, and garnet. The non-silicates are minerals that do not include the silicon oxygen units characteristics of, of silicates. They may contain oxygen, but not in the combination with silicon. Their structure tends to be more variable and less complex than that of the silicates. The non-silicate mineral groups are carbonates, halides, oxides, sulfides, sulfates, and native elements. Many of the non-silicates are economically important, especially those that include valuable metals. Carbonate minerals are any member of a family of minerals that contain the carbonate ion as the basic structural and compositional unit. The carbonates are among the most widely distributed minerals in the Earth's crust. The most common varieties are calcite, a calcium carbonate, and dolomite, a magnesium carbonate. Calcite is the principal mineral of limestone and marbles. 
the mineral dolomite occurs as a replacement for calcite in limestone. When this is extensive, the rock is termed dolomite. Other relatively common carbonate minerals serve as metal ores. Examples are siderite for iron, rhodochrosite for magnesium, and cerussite for lead. Halide minerals are any of a group of naturally occurring inorganic compounds that are salts of the halogen acids, for example, hydrochloric acid. The most common halides are halite, or rock salt, sylvite, and fluorite. The oxide mineral class includes those minerals in which the oxide anion is bonded to one or more metal ions. Three common oxide minerals are hematite, magnetite, and corundum. The sulfide minerals are any members of a group of compounds of sulfur with one or more metals. Most of the sulfides are simple structurally, exhibit high symmetry in their crystal forms, and have many other properties of metal, in including metallic luster and electrical conductivity. They often are strikingly colored and have a low hardness and a high specific gravity. Three common sulfide minerals are galena, pyrite, and cinnabar. The sulfate minerals are a class of minerals that include the sulfate ion within their structure. Sulfate minerals are any naturally occurring salts of sulfuric acid. The sulfate minerals occur commonly in three environments. One, primary evaporite de depositional environments. Two, as minerals in hydrothermal veins. And three, as secondary minerals in the oxidizing zones of sulfide mineral deposits. Some common sulfate minerals are gypsum, anhydrite, and barite. Some 20 elements occur in nature in a pure elemental form, known as the native elements. They are partitioned into three families, metals, semi-metals, and non-metals. The common native metals, uh, which are characterized by simple crystal structure, are gold and silver. Two examples of native semi-metals are antimony and arsenic, and two examples of non-metals are diamond and sulfur. I hope you have enjoyed this program about minerals, the fundamental geologic building blocks of the natural world. This program is for the educational benefit of the listeners. If you are interested in learning more about geology and the geology of the Pacific Northwest, please consider taking my geology courses at Oregon Coast Community College. It would be wonderful to see you there, and I hope you tune in again wish to thank my wife, Nancy Bernhardt, for co-producing this program, Frankie Trujillo Dalby and Bill Dalby at KYAQ 91.7 for granting me the program and technical support. Until we meet next time, please remember that something as insignificant as a small black cobble on a rocky beach has a history of epic proportions and that the future of our planet can only be predicted from the evidence we have discovered from the past. I wish to close by saying, go outside, take a walk. The world is a beautiful place, and only our curiosity can make that beauty meaningful. So long.